Hi guys, um, hope you're all well. Um, today I'm going to talk about kind of my first meeting with Brenda um, and how I kind of began to look after her and how it all happened and, and just how she was when I first met her, what her dementia was like and how I helped her. I first met Brenda, it was Christmas Day, um, me and my then boyfriend, obviously he's my husband now, um, we hadn't been together long, maybe a month, he invited me to his house to meet his parents and his brother and his, his um, brother's wife and his nan was there, Brenda. He had told them that I worked in an old people's home so he had mentioned that his nan had dementia and um, it was kind of, although she'd had it for quite a while, it was still the early stages. I mean, she was quite muddled. She was very repetitive and she forgot a lot of things. She needed a lot of assistance, um, but all in all, she was still kind of early stages of it, really. Um, so, although I met her Christmas Day, I didn't have much dealings with her. She kind of sat quiet in the corner and she ate her, her dinner and... Um, you know, she she was a little shy and obviously I didn't want to kind of run up to her and go, hello, <laughs> and scare her because she didn't know who I was. It became quite clear early on that my mother-in-law did need help. Um, she was going to Brenda's house every day. She was helping her get washed, helping her get dressed, feeding her, making sure she was having her pills. Um, she needed a lot of help. Um, and my mother-in-law was she was struggling so I decided that any days that maybe I was doing an afternoon shift at the old people's home I would go to Brenda's house in the morning I would get Brenda bathed I'd get her dressed um, make sure she ate her breakfast and had her pills and it just meant that my mother-in-law didn't need to go in that morning um, you know and, and it kind of gave her a little break and she could do any jobs that she needed to get done um, and then we we kind of decided that I'd had enough at the home it would all become a bit too much hard work um, and I would look after Brenda full-time so I gave up my job and I started looking after Brenda maybe five out of the seven days a week you know um, and between me and, and my mother-in-law we would work it out between us Brenda was at the time, I mean, she was very muddled, um, but you could have a conversation. It it was brief, it was very repetitive. Um, you know, even if you tried to talk about something else, whether it be the weather or something that was happening in the news that day, um, or maybe, you know, I might have been out at the weekend and wanted to tell her about it, she would listen. You know, you would have to kind of tell her. Um, in a very simplistic way and she would kind of listen but she would soon turn the conversation round onto something that she understood and you know remembered whether it be about her childhood whether she'll be telling me about her husband or something that happened when she was a little girl um, there was a probably handful of stories that she would always kind of relate back to and you would just kind of have the same conversation over and over again um, you had to be very very patient with her you know but you could have kind of a relationship with her you know we did kind of build up a friendship if I had stood in front of her and said Brenda what's my name she probably wouldn't have been able to tell you but she would have been able to kind of say that I was Stefan's girlfriend and that I looked after her and I was a carer um, but certainly my name it, it wasn't in there that that she couldn't kind of learn she was physically really rather fit I mean she needed help to get in and out of the bath um, and that did become more and more difficult and we eventually got a shower a walk-in shower put into the bathroom we took the bath out and the walking shower went in and that made life a lot easier and it also meant that we could shower her every day if we wanted to and we pretty much did um, so she was very clean very well looked after um, and you know her personal care was was 
was taken care of. Yeah, physically she was she was all right. Um, very steady on her feet. We would often go for walks. Um, she lives right on the river, um, so we would walk along the Thames. You know, most mornings it would only be a short walk, maybe ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Um, but she she was capable of doing it. She enjoyed it. Again, you would talk about the same things. Oh, look at the boats. Oh, look at that flower over there. It was the same conversation, but it was it was fine. You know, I enjoyed it. It was it was nice. Um, one thing I did very early on, and it worked very well for us, and I would recommend it to anyone, is that we got Brenda into quite a rigid routine. I would turn up every morning at the same time. Um, I, everything I said to her, everything I gave her, and keeping it slow and calm, talking to them calmly. Here's your hairbrush, Brenda. Brush your hair. Here's your toothbrush, Brenda. Brush your teeth. You know, everything I did was exactly the same. Um, and it didn't confuse her. Um, how I laid out her knife and fork and her plate and everything on the table, how I laid out her sandwich um, at tea time was exactly the same. Just everything you can think of, the same plates, it was all exactly the same every single day. For me, it was like Groundhog Day, but for Brenda, it just meant that she had stability and a routine. Although she did have dementia and she was very confused, she kind of learned that routine. And it also meant that if she was having a bad day or if she had a urine infection, because she goes crazy when she has a urine infection, it just meant that I could kind of see that. It made it more clear to me. She wouldn't know what was coming next or she wouldn't understand what we was doing or there'd be more questions that she was asking or she might get a little distressed or upset or something. Um, you know, tears were quite common with Brenda early on because she was very confused, she was very distressed. She didn't mind me being there and she didn't mind me helping her, but she just couldn't understand why, you know, why did she, why did she need the help? It wasn't fair. It wasn't fair on her and it wasn't fair on me and, and she would often say that sort of thing. But she was happy for me to be there. She never really got... Um, aggressive or anything like that she's never been kind of the aggressive type thank god it's not something that we've had to deal with um but yeah just keeping the routine the same it just it helped me monitor her deterioration the second tip is is leaving notes um you know we left a note with her tea just telling her what sort of time to have it um, and she would sit and obsess over that note. You, you could watch her. She would sit there with her little table beside her. There'd be maybe two notes on there. One would be about her tea. You know, this is the time you've got to have it. And she would, you could see her doing it. She would pick it up and go, oh, right, that's that. And, and then she'd pick up the next one. And that would say, you know, drink your juice. You know, because obviously you didn't want her getting dehydrated. Um, because if she got dehydrated, she would quite often get another urine infection. I would always leave um, a big glass of juice and the note to say drink it and she would you know she would obsess over that note she would read it and read it and then she would have a sip of her drink she would put that down she would obsess over the note again you know and it it sounds awful to us but that's the only way that we could kind of leave her without her not drinking and not eating and so notes were definitely a big thing um, I would leave maybe a little note on the door because she would often stand by the front door it sounds really sad but she would kind of stand by the front door you know waiting is my husband coming home is um julia gonna come and see to me you know she didn't remember that her husband had died um she thought that he was still at work or you know some days she knew <laughs> you know but over time, you know, that was something that she forgot and she would be waiting for her husband to come back from work or so she would often kind of get quite agitated. Um, we've always had a problem with her being agitated. Even now it's, it's still a big thing and we medicate her for it and, and whatnot. 
um, but yeah she would always stand by the door so just a little note on the door to say that maybe I'd be back at five o'clock to give her a tea um, or just to say you know don't don't leave the house Brenda by yourself um, things like that we were very lucky because just literally a couple of doors away from Brenda's house it's not there now um, because they've moved but a couple of doors away from Brenda's house was my husband's work yard um, him and his brother have got their own business and that was there where they worked and she knew that so if she was ever really distressed or if she maybe decided that she wanted to go for a little wander by herself um, someone at the yard whether it be my husband his brother or one of the workers would see her and or she would walk into the yard and go oh you know I haven't seen Stefan or I've not seen my husband or whatever so um yeah they would always walk her back home um and it was literally three doors away I think so it wasn't a long walk for her um and she was she was perfectly safe so we were very lucky with that that we had that kind of set up and and she knew that they were there um yeah notes were definitely very very helpful um you know i'd leave them in all kinds of places um and it would help with all sorts of things whether it be in the toilet or or whatever obviously i'd go back in the evenings and put her to bed um so we would leave a note just saying that we'll be back at you know nine o'clock ten o'clock whatever time it would be um i've forgotten it was so long ago um and we'd put her to bed and then in the morning we'd go back again and it would start all over again you know um like i said groundhog day everything was rigid the routine was rigid um and it it definitely helped we knew that somebody was coming she had her notes she had this kind of rough routine in her head um and it it did help it definitely did help so i i would say the two top tips would be notes and routine especially with early dementia yes yeah, so that's it for today um just kind of gives you an insight into mine and brenda's kind of early relationship and you know how we looked after her at the early stages um and just you know it is hard looking after someone especially how brenda was back then um because there was a lot more to and fro in um there was kind of a lot more confusion there she was physically able to do a lot of things so that you know you was worried about her falling or worried about her walking out the front door and going missing and um that was always quite scary but having the boys work yard nearby having us you know popping in and out throughout the day um, and the notes it really did help um, and it worked well for us um, eventually it didn't work I will do a video on that you know on why we moved in how we dealt with that um, that was a, <laughs> a stressful time as you can probably imagine so um, yeah I'll do a video on that but I hope this has just kind of covered certainly the early stages I probably will go into more detail at some point um, about a few of the things that we had to deal with early on especially with the hallucinations so I will see you next time take care bye